Hello and welcome back to another episode of Farming Life at the Forge. On today's episode, first up, myself and Mam went to Claremont the other day for my brother's birthday, did a bit of shopping and so we filmed a little bit more around the town. After that, I will show you how we are planting our maize. So this year we are going to plant maize, we're going to try it one more time. Um, we're going to do it a little bit differently than the other years. So we'll show you what we're at there, we're planting the first field. And then on Tuesday's video, we'll show you how we're planting the second field as well. That field, um, so the second field of maize that we're going to be planting has whole crop in it now. So that has to be um, cut, baled, wrapped before we can plough it and get ready for sowing maize. So that'll be next week. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and don't forget to like and subscribe below for more. Plough two hectares this morning since we took it off. Uh, <coughs> I didn't grease it or anything, I just wanted to get a feel of it. So, uh, as to grease it now, because that's the way you transport it. Uh, Todd might be a bit clumsy in the field, but it's not, no clumsier than the other plough. As I said before, uh, I do like these points for over here because the ground gets so hard that you can adjust the points if you want. 
and uh, you got a long time out. So there is a bit of wear on it, but once I'm finished sewing the maze, uh, we'll leave it close to the workshop and we'll get all the pieces for it <coughs> and uh, it'll be ready then for um, when we're doing the cereal. So normally I don't plough for cereal, but I have to this year because uh, this wild oats is getting on top of me. And the guy in the crop says I'm better off to plough every uh, third or fourth year. So we haven't ploughed in about five or six, except for maize. So uh, that was it. That's, uh, it's a good big heavy plough to be a lot heavier than uh, Canoverland. But it's on the same basis, spring loaded. As I said, uh, the French call them a non stop mechanical, or you get a non stop hydraulic. In Ireland, they just call them a spring loaded reversible. So uh, you could put it on, or even the 8210, I'd say, would pull it, because it's not too heavy. All the, there's not much weight. That wheel says like that the whole time, and she just swings from one side to the other. Whether the other big old plough I had was very heavy as well, but when you swing it, you had to have a, a very good tractor. Plus, it's not a big job if the, the weather was bad just to pull off the fifth screw. Um, because, uh, as I said, in uh, October, September, October, when you're going back ploughing, sometimes the ground can be a hard pull on a tractor. So if it is, I can rip off the fifth scrape, this has given me uh, a bit of acid. But uh, no, there's not, there's not a drop of oil anywhere, thanks to the Lord. The wheel looks fairly nice. Now you lock it up here when you're going the road with this. I haven't done now, but I must. And um, just sits on ground. The only thing it's missing is there should be a chain from there to there. So when you take it off, all you have to do to take it off is drop it on the ground and it trips the levers itself and it's on that bar so uh, it's even handier than the other plough to put on so uh, that was it hopefully uh, they're a good make of a plough over here Not, uh, so can never land a good make as well and our one our old one was called a nod um, it's the second odd we had the first odd was a trick we still have it actually, a tree scrape reversible, but the two of them now are finished and with the scrap that's over in the other farm, all that's going now uh, in, in about three weeks time. And I'll just take a few rams and the wheel off it in case I might use them. <laughs> so that's it. So dad has started plowing this evening. He's on the TM165 up there, I'll catch him now in a minute. So we have decided to grow maize and um, we're going to do this field which is the rabbit burrow. We're going to try that again this year. We have had a lot of rain since the video where I said we might not do a raise because we hadn't got any rain.
So I am out here now in the field called the rabbit burrow with the 7-7 and our 3 meter agram harrow. So I just harrowed all the field there yesterday and now I'm just going doing around the edges again um, where it's still a bit lumpy and that'll be out with the sower just after. Now we have this here on the back of it, an extra PTO shaft. Normally we would push this the may sower on the back of it and sow straight after. But this year we're doing it a bit different, um, so I'll be doing the harrowing and Dad is coming out with the maize sower soon, so I'll show you that. So this is actually my first year at power harrowing. Normally Dad would do it with the maize sower on the back, but this year we're doing it a bit different. I think I did an okay job, but we'll see when Dad gets out. Um, I'm sure he'll have a few comments for me. And yeah, so just finish off this now and then I'll show you the maize sower. Okay, we're here at the back of the shed, as we call it, uh, the Rabbit Borough Field. So, on the, the about uh, just about four hectares, it goes around. It's a very crooked field. It's kind of a this ditch here, is like a mess, and there's a couple of old uh, pipes uh, for draining off water of the other fields that were here. Then, this is our seven thousand, which the boat would be nearly the same horsepower. Only this is the older version of the 77 and uh, well actually no the 7610 was in between the two. Normally we'd have that sower on the back of that, or not normally but we can't do it if we're under pressure. But you need you need a bigger tractor to work on it, it's very heavy and you can compress compact the ground. So uh, <coughs> this is the main sower I showed you there a few days ago we were repaired. So, this is the fertilizer is in there, and the seed, not for slug pellets, uh, well we don't have any, but sometimes we don't use it, we don't really uh, have a problem with slug pellets here. So, it's getting a bit late for sowing maize, normally we have it up well, it's the latest I ever sowed it, and, uh, but they all tell me it's okay. So uh, this year we're actually sowing it a bit different than normal. Uh, to be watching a couple of guys up the road and they sow it this way. I have often sowed it this way myself, but they said to sow the headlands first. I've seen them ahead other than that, I wouldn't have done it. I think they were cutting me. So you sow the headlands first, and then when you're sowing the middle of the field, you come up to the marker, the tram line, and then you reverse back. So that's why that tractor is handier because you can steer it with the brakes and she just swing around uh, to turn around whether if you had a bigger tractor with the, the power hair on that together you have to be backing up and turning and you're doing a lot of compaction now another way with the big tractor is to sow the middle of the field and then plow the outside after but I haven't got the time for that now it's getting late so we have another field to do after this I have to actually bail it this evening for silage, spread the muck and plough. So uh, it's just that uh, it's getting late and we're under a bit of pressure, but uh, hopefully uh, it'll come okay. So uh, now this one, I normally have cages for for this one, but I spread the wheels there during the summer and I took off the brackets and I can't find them. So she'll have to do without it. But uh, that's all. Uh, I don't think get on with it now and get on. How the French do afterwards, that's where we're kind of getting very particular in sewing it in straight lines. Uh, we grub it afterwards. <coughs> and I say it's very good for in the hot weather or making the maize grow. But the last two years was a disaster, my maize. And there was two lads over the road had good maize. And they did this. So that's why I'm doing this this year. So uh, we'll see. Plus, uh, well, we got different seed this year, but I'm not too happy with it. It's, pi it's Pioneer. Uh, but the seeds are very small. So Emily was back up at the co-op to get different seed for the next field. But uh, 
Well, to me they look very small. I, I never saw them before. That was it. As I said, this is the Rana Borough. There's Mam picking stones. Ma'am. She's my ma'am, not yours. Yeah. And uh, what do you call it? Well, our neighbour in Ireland had a field called the Rana Borough. And then we have all these rabbits here. So uh, that was it. is here with a load that he brought back from Ireland so if you remember a while back he brought off machinery from here to Ireland and now he's bringing us something um, that I'm sure you'll all recognize tipsy bin so you've probably already seen this with Adrian over at iFarm we farm who did a demonstration on these bins so according as you use the meal then it'll tip over so that you can easily access um, the last bit of meal without hurting your back so most of you already know what this is if not all you so I won't be actually doing a demonstration on it in English but I am going to try and sell them over here in France 
see if there's a French market for it at all so I will actually be doing a video on it but in French explaining how it works a lot of you have been asking for me to speak French and show what my language is like or my accent so I guess this will be an opportunity for you to see one of the videos but if you click on it, it's in French don't worry all my future videos will be back in English once again that's that for this week's episode thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one